Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's lecture pertains to nutrition. In nutrition, we covered macronutrients and micronutrients. However, those of importance are discussed here from among the minerals, which is number one is calcium. Then we discuss iron. Calcium is a major element of the body. 98% of calcium is found in bones. Amount of calcium in blood is 10 mg percent. The dynamic equilibrium between calcium in blood and that in the skeleton is maintained by the interaction of vitamin D. Vitamin D, parathormone and calcitonin. Sources are milk and milk products. You are well aware of sources. Greeny green leafy vegetables, cereals, fruits, eggs and fish, then the functions of calcium are, it provides rigidity and strength to, to bones and teeth. Calcium is deposited in the trabeculae of long bones as a store to release during pregnancy and lactation. Calcium plays an important role in blood coagulation, muscle contraction, myocardial action, and neuromuscular irritability and is, is responsible for the integrity of various membranes. The low blood calcium levels are very very low could cause tetany <coughs> and it could also lead to various bone diseases which include osteomalacia i mean the low levels could lead to osteomalacia rickets fracture of susceptible bones impaired enamel Second is phosphorus. It is the second most abundant mineral in the body after calcium. Uh, remember, calcium is the most abundant mineral in the body. Phosphorus is found in bones, enamel, RBCs, red blood cells, and plasma. The functions of phosphorus are <coughs> formation of bone and teeth mineral, absorption and transport of nutrients. It regulates acid-base balance. The energy released due to metabolism of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins is, is accomplished by phosphates, ADB, ADP. Phosphates play an important role in cell protein synthesis. It is a part of DNA and RNA. The intakes, daily intakes, 800 to 1200 milligram daily. And the sources of phosphorus are meat, fish, egg, milk, nuts, legumes, cereals. Now we come to another very important mineral, extremely important for human body. As you know, it's part of iron, which is iron, which is part of hemoglobin. So the adult human body contains three to four gram of iron of which 60 to 670 percent is present in blood as circulating hemoglobin and the rest is stored as storage iron circulating hemoglobin ka ye 60 to 70 percent part iron or baki remaining 20, uh, 30 percent or 30 to 40 percent is present as storage iron functions iron is necessary for the formation of hemoglobin brain development and function iron regulates body temperature and muscle activity iron improves immune system as it increases the production of t cells it helps in the production of antibodies iron binds oxygen to blood cells and helps in oxygen transport and cell respiration Sources are there two types of iron, one is heme iron and the second one is non-heme iron. 
Heme iron is better absorbed than non-heme iron. Foods rich in heme iron are liver, meat, poultry, fish. Iron content in milk is very low. Milk, yeah, they say, say that it's, it's almost a balanced diet, but it is deficient in iron. Food containing non-heme iron are green leaf leafy vegetables, legumes, oils, nuts, legumes, dry fruits. So what you can say is the animal sources, they are rich in heme iron, while the plant sources, which include green leaf leafy vegetables, let's say palak, they are rich in non-heme iron. Now the iron deficiency and the its detections, de its detection are very important. The decreased storage, three, there are three stages. First stage or the initial stage is that there is decreased storage of iron without any detectable abnormalities. Second, any app uh, just screening karate and could test karate hai, तो आपको पता चल सकता है कि आपके आयरन स्टोर्स डिप्लीट हो रहे हैं अदरवाइज नो नंबर 2 इमीडिएट इंटरमीडिएट डेफिशिएंसी ऑफ आयरन स्टोर्स गेटिंग एग्जॉस्टेड बट नो एविडेंस ऑफ एनीमिया नंबर 3 ओवर आयरन डेफिशिएंसी विद डिक्रीज्ड हीमोग्लोबिन कंसंट्रेशन वेल आई वुड से रादर that in the second stage, which is intermediate deficiency of iron stores getting exhausted, in this case, the test would be positive, which detects the deficiency of iron stores. And in the third stage, just when you go for CBC hemoglobin percentage examination, the iron deficiency would be detected as hemoglobin would levels would fall uh, below 11. WH expert committee identifies anemia if hemoglobin level in blood is less than 11 gram percent. For an adult male, 13 gram percent for an adult male and less than 12 gram for a child. MCHC concentration less than 34 percent is considered anemic for all groups. Now, nutrition anemia is a disease syndrome caused by malnutrition in its widest, widest sense. Being defined by WHO as a condition in which hemoglobin content of blood is lower than normal as a result of a deficiency of one or more essential nutrients, regardless of the cause of such deficiency. De detrimental effects include pregnancy, Maternal deaths, infection, aggravated by parasitic disease, work capacity, impairment of maximum work capacity. <coughs> by uh, pregnancy, we mean that there could be a lot of problems for mother and child. The type of anemia which occurs in iron deficiency is microcytic anemia. Hypochromic microcytic anemia characterized by low serum iron, increased serum iron binding capacity, decreased serum ferritin, and decreased marrow iron stores. I would repeat, like to repeat, these are actually the, they constitute the lab investigations. You can go for serum iron, this, it will be low, the normal, below normal. Then iron binding capacity would be increased and serum ferritin would be low. Now the clinical manifestations of anemia, as you are aware, weakness, fatigue, 
failure, tingling of extremities, brittle nail, coilonychias, coilonychias, which is spoon-shaped nails, and altered hair growth. These are the clinical manifestations, which include both signs, symptoms, and signs. Well, you have to be very cautious about mothers. For mothers or pregnant ladies, you have to give daily iron containing at least 180 milligram of paracelphate and 0.5 milligram folic acid. These are available in various under various brand names like uh, free fall vitamin, hybrid folic, etc. We come to next topic which is iodine. Iodine is an integral part of thyroid hormones, thyroxine and triiodothyronine. Its function is to maintain the control of energy metabolism of the body. Most important in synthesis of thyroid hormone is the ability of the thyroid uh, gland to trap and oxidize iodide molecules into free iodine. The sources of iodine include lobsters, fish, oysters, vegetable grown in iodine-rich soil. Other, the soil is rich in iodine, you will not get iodine deficiency. When the soil is not iodine-rich as in high mountains, high altitudes, then they are likely to get iodine deficiency unless compensated and likely to be suffering from cholesterol. When a deficiency exists, thyroid enlargement called as goiter develops in the front of neck. Thyroidism and myxedema are pathological conditions resulting from low thyroid activity. When the hypothyroidism is due to physiological atrophy from advancing age or due to surgery, it is termed as mixed edema. The skin is dry and coarse and tongue is thick. Now these are the clinical features of hypothyroidism and the metabolism is slow. When hypothyroidism affects the fetus, cretinism develops. The features would be thick lips a large tongue, arrested skeletal development, mental retardation and slow basal metabolic rate. These are the features. Well, hyperthyroidism you can see exophthalm mask can occur. For go, uh, how to control goiter, how to prevent goiter, you can use iodized salt or oil, then iodine monitoring, manpower training, mass communication, and of course fortification of iodized salt, this I have already mentioned. Now that was about minerals or important minerals have uh, been discussed. topic, which is assessment of the nutritional status. The assessment assessment methods of nutritional status, any nutritional status, individuals ka or communities ka dekhna hai. Of individual, it is influenced by adequacy of food intake, quality, and quantity. Both quality, nutrition intake ka kaise hai, aur uski quantity kaisi hai, dono cheez hai. Whether he is taking balanced food or otherwise. And also by his or her physical health. Our community, individuals make a community. So it is sum of individual nutritional status of individuals who form the community. 
असेसमेंट मैथड्स ऑफ न्यूट्रिशन स्टेटस यानी उस कम्यूनिटी का या इंडिविजुअल का बींग स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ कम्यूनिटी मेडिसिन और बींग टीचर ऑफ कम्यूनिटी मेडिसिन वी हैव टू लुक फॉर द कम्यूनिटी इन द कम्यूनिटी वी लुक फॉर वी टेक अ सैम्पल ऑफ द कम्यूनिटी एंड वी लुक फॉर द फॉलोइंग नंबर वन इज क्लिनिकल एग्जामिनेशन नंबर टू इज एंथ्रोपोमीट्री दैन नंबर थ्री बायो केमिकल इवेल्युएशन फंक्शनल असेसमेंट असेसमेंट ऑफ डाइट्री इनटेक वाइटल एंड हेल्थ स्टेटिस्टिक्स एंड इकोलॉजिकल स्टडीज ये आपको स्टेटस बताएगा वेदर दे आर अंडर नरिश्ड और दे टेक नॉर्मल डाइट एंड वेल बैलेंस डाइट और दे आर दे कुड बी ओवर वेट एज वेल Now coming to clinical examination, it is an essential feature of all nutritional surveys, since the ultimate objective is to assess the levels of health of individuals or of population groups in relation to the food they consume. It is also the simplest and most practical method of ascertaining. the nutritional status of a group of individuals the number of physical signs some specific and some non specific known to be associated with states of malnutrition when two or more clinical signs characteristic of a deficiency disease are present simultaneously their diagnostic significance is greatly enhanced now world health uh, organization expert committee classified signs used in nutritional surveys into three categories now what we are saying is what constitute nutritional survey or survey of the nutrition taken by a, a community number 1 now we broadly classify into three categories one is where you can come across various problems or symptoms or signs in the community so we have to categorize whether they they belong to nutritional problems or otherwise number one is not related to nutrition for example alopecia pyorrhea number two that need further investigation for example malar pigmentation corneal vascularization number 3 now this is the three third category which we have to focus on because they could be related to nutritional nutritional deficiency they are known to be of value for example are angular stomatitis angular stomatitis due to deficiency of vitamin b2 which is riboflavin deficiency then bite it spot as you are well aware and was talked to you it is due to deficiency of vitamin a the ocular manifestation one of the uh, main ocular manifestation of vitamin a deficiency then very very which is due to vitamin b1 or thiamine deficiency goiter as you are well aware is due to deficiency of iodine however clinical sign has following drawbacks the malnutrition cannot be quantified on the basis of clinical signs many deficiencies are unaccompanied by physical signs lack of specificity and subjective nature of most of the physical signs meaning thereby ke aap clinical sign alone sirf clinical sign pe aap decide nahi kar sakte ke that it is due to malnutrition because it could be due to some other causes there are many differential diagnosis then dusra iska aspect le le there are many deficiencies deficiencies hain 
लेकिन फिजिकल साइंस अफेयर में नहीं होते इसको इसको कहेंगे हम दे लैक ऑफ स्पेसिफिसिटी इसको हम इसलिए डायरेक्टली रिलेशनशिप इसकी नहीं कह सकते कि दिस साइंस आर ड्यू टू दिस साइंस आर कॉजल और द डेफिशंसीज न्यूट्रिशनल डेफिशंसीज आर कॉजल एंड प्रोड्यूसिंग दिस सिम्टम्स एंड साइंस then we come to clinical examination of patients sorry we have already touched this topic these are with various photographs the next is after clinical exam number 2 is anthropometry anthropometric measures such as height weight skin fold thickness and arm circumference are valuable indicators of nutritional status in young children additional measures such as head and chest circumference are made if the anthropometric <coughs> measurements thereby measurement of height weight skin fold thickness and arm circumference if these measurements are recorded over a period of time they reflect the patterns of growth and development and how the individuals deviate from average at various ages in body size built and nutritional status anthropometric data can be collected by non medical personnel if given sufficient training in the and just to add to the anthropometric data we measure but usually for obesity body mass index which is index of weight for height weight and height to classify underweight overweight and obesity the weight it is measured as weight in kilogram over height in meter square for example if the weight is 70 and the height is 1.75 meters uh how would you calculate it you calculate it by 70 divided by 1.75 into 1.75 it comes to 22.9 So underweight is classified as having BMI less than 18.50. Normal is 18.50 to 24.99. Overweight, remember, is more than 25. So norm normality is between 18.5 and under 25. Pre pre obese is 25 to less than 30, and obesity starts at 30. <coughs> Thank you very much for today. Okay. Now we come to we are we were coming to assessment by of nutritional status. Uh, we come to now lab tests or laboratory tests. Number one would be hematological assessment. now this includes hemoglobin estimation let's say cbc examination in which we will have hemoglobin estimation rbc count red blood cell count hematocrit determination mcv and mchc then we proceed to stool examination for intestinal parasites then urine examination for albumin and sugar then we come to biochemical tests now for vitamin a deficiency we uh, order or investigate serum retinol test the normal value is 20 micrograms per liter then for thiamine tpp stimulation of rbc activity riboflavin rbc 
glutathione activity, niacin, urine, and methyl nicotinamide, folate, serum folate, vitamin B12, simply serum vitamin B12 concentration, vitamin C, leukocyte, ascorbic acid, vitamin K, prothrombin time, and protein, serum albumin concentration. Well, what are the functional indicators? These are for structural integrity. If there is vitamin E, the erythrocyte fragility is detected by vitamin E. Capillary fragility detected by vitamin C. Host defenses by zinc and iron. Hemostasis thrombin time detects vitamin K levels, reproduction by sperm count and it points towards zinc and vitamin E. Then nerve function, nerve conduction studies are carried out and it may point towards vitamin B1 or B12 deficiency. Work capacity, for example, heart rate, as you know in anemia, or it detects iron deficiency, the uh, tachycardia can occur.